Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd. And today we are gathered together to look at something called iTimekeep from Belfield Systems over in Pittsburgh, where I've just discovered that they're on a slightly different time zone there. John showed his screen at, uh, gosh, what, 3 minutes to 11, not realizing that our attendees here uh, at the attorney computer systems realm are always right on time. So we got 15 people here now. We're waiting for a few more. And uh, so I'm going to give a little bit of heads up on how to get around this webinar. Um, um, let's see. If you have got a little box of icons over to the right of your screen that have several icons in them, and the one at the top is arrows that probably point to the right uh, or point to the left. Uh, if they're pointing to the right, that means you'll get that bigger box out of the way by clicking it. Once you do that, those arrows will turn into arrows that point to the left. So if you need to, you can bring that box back out. That box is where you would type a question, and our lovely moderator, Leanne, will repeat your question, and John or I will answer it. Or, if you're feeling bold, there is a, an icon in that, uh, in that smaller box, the same one that's got the uh, arrows in it, that looks like a hand with an arrow pointing upwards in front of it. And that means you're going to raise your hand. So if you want to ask a question and you want to actually ask it live, just let us know by raising your hand, Leanne, when she notices and when we can interrupt. We'll unmute you, let you ask your question, and then we'll uh, mute you back up and go on with, with what we're doing here. So without any further ado, uh, I am going to turn this over to John. Now, now John is going to describe a product called iTimeKeep that runs on uh, the any web-enabled device, keeps track of time, and puts it into tabs. There, that's pretty much what it does. We can might as well stop now. But uh, I'm going to uh, turn the things over to John, and, and, and John will tell us a little bit more about it, and then we're going to come back to my machine and actually take a look at how that time comes into tabs. John, you there? Good morning, everybody. How are you all doing? Uh, we're here to talk a little bit about iTimeKeep, and uh, more, more importantly, we're going to talk about mobility and what mobility means to the, to the law office and the firms. As you can see from the slide that I have, we're going to talk about the effect of technology and how to ensure a positive impact when you're implementing these new devices into your, uh, into your firms. So a quick agenda, we're going to talk about BYOD, not BYOB, as you all know. We're going to define attorney productivity. I'm going to talk a little bit about the mind of an attorney. That may be a shorter, a shorter conversation than you may uh, understand. Uh, we're going to talk, talk about the mobile device sweet spot and why recording it or it never happened is the most important thing we'll read here today. So Belfield was founded uh, two years ago by the three of us, uh, Danny Garcia on the left and Gabriela Estrez in the middle, and that's me standing there holding up the table. Uh, previously, Gabby and Danny had a firm called eBilling Hub, which Thomson Reuters bought just a couple years ago. We have about 15 years in legal expertise and technology. So w when did all this start? You might re uh, recognize this name, Mike Lazardis. He was the C CEO of RIM. And he's famous for bringing the mobility world to legal with uh, the Blackberries, you know. He's also famous for saying something else, and that he wasn't impressed with the iPhone and it wouldn't threaten Blackberry. And you can probably see also on the screen he's the ex-CEO of Rim because we know that it absolutely threatened Blackberry. Since that time, Apple has become the most the the, the most uh, prolific company in the world, out surpassing Exxon. Just a couple years ago. Uh, we were all complaining on a uh, quarterly basis at the billions in profits that Exxon was making. Now, uh, a wealthy company in the world, and it's, and it's continuing to rise. They're, they're outpacing Exxon by, uh, by quite a margin. They're also well known for uh, starting the BYOD movement. And if you don't know what the BYOD movement is, it means bring your own device. So there's been several paradigms in legal technology over the years. The first one, obviously, was uh, the desktop and workstation switching over from the IBM Selectric to uh, word processing. That, that was a pretty big move in technology, as you all know. And then the BlackBerry came along, and now people could walk around and put their emails on their uh, uh, 
uh, from wherever they are and, and look at their calendar. Also created such terms as the Blackberry Widow and the uh, Crackberry. And then the iPads, iPhones, and Droids came out. And uh, the spouses of those carrying around the Blackberries started to buy those. And those with the Blackberries wanted a little bit of that eye action because they had all these great apps, they had all these great things you can do. You can play Word with friends, you can FaceTime. Uh, you could be much more productive, or so they thought, with these devices. So what that started was the bring your own device movement. And what that meant was you had attorneys pounding at the, at the doors, at the gates of IT, saying, we need to use these devices. Because before that, what happened was when an attorney was hired, they would be given their uh, nice suit, skinny black tie, and a Blackberry as, as, their, as their garments and could go off and uh, practice law. Now it's a little different. The attorneys want to bring their own devices to the world. And this is where the iPads, iPhones, and droids come in. So it's really created a big shift in technology within legal. So now we have not only three different iPhones and three different iPads, we have 125 different droids, all kinds of different tablets. There's nine different uh, versions of the droid operating system instead of just one thing that IT needed to deal with. Now, now they need to handle all of this and all these new applications and, and, and things that the attorneys can do on them. And uh, if you all have any iPhones, iPads, or Droids, you know you probably have 30 or 40 different applications running on them. And that's created a pretty big problem uh, because now what's happening is they're doing all these things outside of the office on these devices. And they're busier than ever uh, doing things for clients. So that kind of created the, uh, the a productivity issue because up until now, we've really thought as productivity as, be, as doing. If you're doing something, you're productive. But how many times have we heard that, boy, I don't know, I was so busy today, but I don't know where the day went. And there's a really good reason for that. And at uh, Belfield, we've come up with this equation called the productivity equation. So you might think of productivity as doing, and that's absolutely wrong. If there's one screen you're going to remember from this, from this uh, webinar, it should be this one. Productivity is not doing. Productivity equals doing plus recording. If you don't record it, you never did it. So now what what's happening, these uh, firms are giving the devices or allowing the devices with, with, within the entity. They're downloading all these apps. They're working on uh, all kinds of different ways with clients. But if they're not recording the time, did they ever really do it? So it ends up being a counterproductive tool if you're not somehow uh, managing the time that you spent against that matter. I hope that makes sense to you all. So now we're going to talk about the mind of an attorney. And let me go on to the next slide. So all an attorney wants to do is practice law. Anything that gets them off this line, they don't want to do. In, in general, I mean, you have, you have some attorneys that are very good at the mundane, little mundane services that they need to handle. And they are meetings, <clears throat> expenses, and the big one, timekeeping. And the harder it is to enter time, the further away it is from that line. We need to move timekeeping up to that line to make it very easy. And that's one of the things we're talking about today is I timekeep and how we've done that. We can never really be on the line because it is not the practice of law, but we can put it pretty darn close. So now we need to talk about what is mobile. So we're talking about mobility and uh, these tools that they have. And up to this point, we thought as mobility as being traveling on planes, trains, and automobiles. That, that makes a lot of sense. But also, if you're at a deposition, you're, you're in court, you're at a soccer game, uh, you're truly mobile, right? You're away from the office. But isn't mobile meaning you're out of the seat, you're away from your PC, you're in the conference room, you're in a colleague's room, you're in the firm administrator's room. Anytime you get up away from your desk, you're out of your own seat, you're mobile. If you take a phone call from a client and you're not at your desk, what do you do with the time? How do you record that? Or if you're uh, meeting with a client in the conference room, you're truly, you're truly mobile. So this is, uh, really redefines uh, how we thought at Belfield about being mobile as we watch the workflow of uh, our attorneys. And then we want to talk about the mobile device sweet spot. When does it make sense to do something mobily? Uh, so we came up with the idea of choosing the right domain, the right task, and the right apps. And I'll just quickly go over this with you. The right domain is when you have no laptop, 
you have no room and no time. So any one of these three criteria creates the right domain for needing uh, some type of mobile uh, device to handle your, uh, your applications. And choosing the right domain, obviously, you're waiting for an elevator, you're at the food court deposition, hopefully you're not bored at this seminar, uh, waiting for a cab train or waiting for a plane. And then we want to talk about choosing the right tasks. So there are certain tasks that make sense on mobile devices and there are certain that don't. Uh, we have what we call the five minute rule. If you can do it within five minutes, it makes sense to do it on a mobile device. If it's going to take you longer than five minutes, and this is a general, generality, it takes longer than five minutes, then you might want to do it on your laptop and not on a mobile device. And here's just some, some of the things that you can do with, uh, mo from a mobile device that makes sense to us. Uh, obviously, reading emails, you do that now. So choosing the right apps, this is very important. If anybody ever comes to your office and tries to sell you an app or you see an app or your attorneys want to bring an app in that does more than one thing, that seems to be complicated, that's not the more complicated the application is, the less likely they're going to use it. This is going to be one of those apps that sits in the back of your screen that you never touch, that you just wasted money on. Because when you're out in your mobile, you're doing things very quickly. You want to be, it's just like a surgeon grabbing, sticking his hand out and, and getting the right instrument put it slapped into his hand. They don't put eight instruments in his hand. They just put one and it's pointed the right way. And that's the same way you need to be when you're mobile. Very quick, very surgical, very precise. And you want to make sure they follow the five-minute rule. I know personally the more complicated an application is, the less likely I'm going to use it. And I know the, the attorneys are the same way. And you'll see in a few minutes uh, how iTimekeep really fits uh, the, the mold of this and follows our philosophy. So we've talked about choosing the right domain, no laptop, no room, no time. We talked about choosing the right tasks, the five-minute rule, and choosing the right apps, cover the basics, and be single purpose. So those are very important. And those are the applications, especially choosing the right apps. Those are the apps that your attorneys are going to use time after time. It won't be a waste of money. <clears throat> and obviously, as I said earlier, excuse me, the most important screen here is it's not just doing it, it's doing it and recording it. Because you can have all these applications, you can be working on matters, you can be there's there's applications for picking juries, there's applications for making presentations. If you're doing that on your mobile device and you're not recording it, then you're not getting paid for it and, and you're in, and it's costing the firm money. And it's absolutely counterproductive. So this is how you get a hold of me. You can get a hold of me through Paul, or if you have any questions, uh, John at Belfield.com, or you can give me a ring on my cell. I'll be more than happy to answer any of them. So right now we're going to go into a little demonstration of iTimekeep. And with the gods are with us, we're going to be able to make this application work on my computer here for you guys. Oh, there it is. So iTimekeep is an application that works on the iPhone, iPad, or Droid. On the iPhone and down? iPad. Yes, sir. Okay. You're, we're looking at your other screen, so you've just dragged that out of the realm. I'm sorry. Thank you. Is that better? That is better. Yay. So the i iTime key works on the iPhone, iPad, or Droid. If you have an iPhone or an iPad, go to the App Store and download it for free, and you can follow the exact same demonstration I'm going to show you here. When you, when you launch iTimekeep, you're going to see this screen. This is a login and password screen. And But what you want to do, you can uh, attach to our time and billing system here in Pittsburgh, and you want to log in as a guest. So you touch these little words here, log in as a guest, and it's going to connect to our billing system here in Pittsburgh, just like it would if, if you're a firm. So there's very simple is this application. There's two screens, basically, to it. There's the My Time screen, and these are some time de demo time entries we've, we've already had put in. You can see these two with blue dots. That's signifying that they're unsubmitted. They would, these would be unsubmitted back into tabs. There's also a designation down here. There's two entries to submit for 10 hours. So what we want to do right now is add some time. And again, simplicity is the key here. How simple can we make this so an attorney can enter time in just a few seconds and get back to that straight line of practicing law? So. Add time, we want to use a plus sign. 
So you hit the plus sign, and it goes to the add time screen, and it comes up with the blank time add time screen. We want to touch the matter bars, and it will populate the matter from recent matters. So what it did, what it did, it went to our time and billing system and pre-populated it in real time, the recent matters. So I'm going to pick a matter, and now if the dates today you leave it the same, we want to add hours. Let's say we're standing in line at Starbucks and we just read a client email and I want to fill a point one for that. And if the task and activity codes are relevant, it'll populate those as well. They're not mandatory unless you want them to be. And then we can also put a description in. Okay, I spelled that right. We hit save. You can see we now have three unsubmitted time entries. Now submitting them into tabs three is as easy as hitting the submit key and clicking yes. The time is now sent over to tabs three for insertion. So you can see how quickly I did that. It probably took, what, 15 seconds? Let me do one in real time. I'll pick another one. I'll build two hours. Grab task and activity codes. And this is for a Russian client. So we hit save. So we have one on submit a time entry. We hit submit and yes. So this is, this is on an iPhone 3 or an iPhone 4. If you happen to have a 4S, let me show you the differentiator. If you have a 4S, you'll see that there's a little microphone down here versus uh, the 3 and the 4. So this allows us to use Siri and the voice recognition that's available in Siri. So what I did was, since I can't demonstrate Siri for you through this uh, simulator that I have, I can show you one. And I did this one over the holidays during a webinar. So when you're entering the description, I hit the button. Because your computer is still back on the Russian description of time. I'm sorry about that, Paul. Did it catch so up yet? So just tell us what, yeah, nope. All right. So what happens is you, uh, with, uh, with the four S and the voice recognition, you simply hit the little microphone, narrate your description, hit save, and it populates that very quickly. And then you uh, enter the time and it runs it over to tab, tabs three. We must have a little uh, delay here from Pittsburgh today. So that's it on the iPhone, iPad, and Droid. That's how quickly you can enter time from anywhere you are. Very okay. cool. Anybody have any questions? Leanne, do we have anything? I don't have any questions yet, Paul. Okay. Oh, wait, there is one. I have a hand raised. Who? Who is it? Jessica. Okay. Jessica, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead, Jessica, with your question. She must be shy. Can you hear us, Jessica? She's unmuted. Okay. Go ahead and mute her back up. Okay. Well, keep uh, keep those hands raising if you want to ask questions or uh, typing them in. I'm going to switch control back to me real quick, and I want to show you guys. Before you start, Paul, I do have a question. Okay. What do you have? This is from Rob. Is there a way to auto-populate the matters from existing matters and tabs? Well, that is a given. What's happening when you click on that matter button, it's going out, Rob, and looking at the last 20 matters that you logged time for and bringing back those specific 20 matters as your most recent entries. And then if you prefer not to use one of those, you can also uh, just simply select by, by typing in a name and searching or by typing in a client number directly. Did that answer his question, Leanne? He said, great. And how hard is it to configure to our server-based um, Practice Master Tab 3? Well, we install something that I'm about to show you, Rob. Uh, takes 
Oh, a couple hours. It's not. Um, it's not an install that you'd have anybody but us do, uh, simply because it's it's very specific to the product and specific to your copy of tabs. But once that's done, everything else is pretty much a given. I'm going to go ahead and make myself the presenter and show you what I'm talking about. For some reason, we do have a little bit of delay. I think I am now the presenter, and I think. Now, almost, you can see my screen. OK, so we're going to go into my hosted desktop. And we are going to find out that it is disconnected while we were. So we're going to let it catch up and reconnect. I have a couple more questions. OK, let's go with those. Uh, Pam wants to know, how do we obtain iTimekeep? And is it a per license? Product. Ah, yes. John, we didn't tell them about pricing. Do you want to tell them about pricing? Absolutely. It's a, it's a subscription service. Uh, it's per year. And uh, when you subscribe to iTimekeep, you're subscribing to the service, not to a device. So if you happen to have an iPhone, iPad, and a Droid, you can grab any one of your devices. Also, I, I, I failed to mention, Paul, that uh, it also works on the Chrome and Safari browsers. So yep. you can log Good in point. using a a secure URL. We have many of our attorneys doing that as well. Uh, the subscription cost is $440 per year per attorney, and that comes to about a point one or two point ones you need to find a month to, uh, to to just even break even. And we're finding our attorneys are finding it, uh, it, it an hour to two hours a month minimally uh, above and beyond that. I from the, probably know some attorneys that could get an extra hour every day out of their out of their day if they had a product like that. Yeah, we did have uh, one attorney uh, from New Orleans with his name on the door. Uh, about twelve attorneys at the office. He emailed me the first day and said that he recorded a point nine, which he said I paid for my year the first day. <laughs> it's because he's just driving in the car and talking on the phone. And Pam, you can get it. Uh, you can contact John. Um, or me directly, and we'll get you set up, uh, whatever you need. So getting it is easy, and, and it's, what you say, 440 per year per user, right, John? Right. That's correct. Okay. Now, I am looking at Rutledge Manning, who just happens to be somebody that I have recorded a, an iTime Keep time entry for. This is not it. I'm going to go over to our server. There it is. This is the I, tabs to the iTime Keep import wizard. Um, it is something that gets run once a day, twice a day, once a week, once a billing cycle, whatever your preferences are. I'm going to start the import, and I'm done. If we go back now to my other desktop and refresh this view of time, we now have a second entry called Test Delete. And if anyone from Rutledge Manion is on this call, rest assured that I will delete this before you get your bill. In fact, we'll do it right now. It's that simple. You basically go to the server where it's running. You run the import routine by clicking the button, and you wait. Uh, if you try to run the import routine and there's nothing to do, this is what you get. Found zero batches ready to import. No batches are ready to be imported at this time. That's about all there is. So if uh, you have four people using the software, using the, the icon keep on their devices, you end up with four import files. And this routine will pull them all in all at the same time. I think we have another question, Leanne. The question is, what software is downloaded to the server, and what type of security is applied to the software? Who's that from? That sounds like an IT question. <laughs> OK. Uh, there is a folder that's created in, under the local disk of the uh, server itself, Belfield Connect folder. That's what's running there. There's actually a bridge that runs. This is geeky stuff, so if, you, if you're phasing out on us, we'll, we'll stop talking geek in a second. There's a bridge that runs in a, uh, in a command prompt window that establishes that connection between iTimekeep and the cloud. And then there's this piece of software here. There is also one more piece of software that gets run, which is the configuration. And that simply is how we configure the connection. Um, 
How secure it is, I'm going to have to talk to Danny, uh, unless, John, you want to address that. Uh, we, we, it, it's, it's, it's a totally encrypted connection, I know that. John? Yeah, we run an SSL connection, and it's, uh, it's encrypted twice, actually. It's about as, as safe or safer than any banking that you do online. Yeah, mm -hmm. your standard, standard encrypted, better than the bank's sort of connection. Okay, Leanne, we have another one. Um, this question is from Pam. What are you importing if you've already submitted the time entry via your mobile device? Well, when you submit the time entry via your mobile device, it's actually going to I, uh, iTimeKeeps Cloud. Uh, which is also a very secure environment. It stays there until somebody imports it from the cloud. So when John pressed submit those two time entries, he was sending them from his mobile device to the cloud where they sat waiting for someone at the, at the office to run this routine which pulls them off the cloud and imports them into Practice Master, which we do use Practice Master to do the import, but everyone has a copy, whether they know it or not. A free copy comes with tabs three, and so that's how it's getting in. It's going to Practice Master and then instantly also being in tabs. Another question, Lan? Well, one question was, do you need Practice Master to use this, which I think you just answered. Right. You do, but you can use the free copy that you, everybody has. The next question, would we have to do the import daily? And can it be set up to run automatically off hours? It cannot be run up to set up that I know of to run automatically. Um, although I will make a note of that question, and, and Leanne, if you can make a note of who's asking it, we'll make sure that that's actually true. Um, but so far as I know, it cannot. It needs to be run uh, by whoever. Um, Although it's really just a very, very quick thing that happens. Um, daily, weekly, it can be done at any time, as many times as you want. It will simply import whatever is waiting. Any more questions? Not at this time. OK. John, anything else you'd like to say? No, I think you covered it all, Paul. Thank you. I'm glad mm -hmm. we're doing the, uh, the geeky part of it. The geeky part? <laughs> oh, I do have one more question. Sorry. OK. Actually, I have two. The first one, um, can it be imported by a central person, or must each user import Oh, no, it's, it's a central person. Um, this is running on the server where Tabs is running. And uh, it, 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 if, if you have 27 attorneys in your firm and they're all running iTimeKeep, pressing this button once will import all the time that's waiting for all 27 people. Hey, Paul, can I interject something, please? You may. Danny's just created a, uh, a new version of the integration where that can run off of a workstation. So if there's a central person, uh, that person would need to get up from her works to his or her workstation. So they don't oh. need to go to the server anymore. Very nice. I believe Perfect. you asked him that. Yeah. Any more, Leanne? Yes, this question, um, actually two more now. Did John say that there's a demo of just the adding time part and that would lead into the other question. Was there a login for the iPhone app um, that you can repeat again, the username or that guest password part? John, you want to address that? Sure. What I would like you all to do is, with your iPads or iPhones, go to the App Store, download iTimeKeep. There's no, it's not Keeper, it's just Keep. Once you download iTimeKeep, launch the application, and then you'll see some words on there that say, log in as a guest. What I would like you to do is touch those words. That's a hot spot. When you touch those words. John, can you show your screen and, and can you show that? I just made you the presenter, John. Can you see my screen? I do. Great. So let me, have to, let me turn it off and turn it on again. Your fingers crossed. Okay, now I'm still seeing the iPhone. Yeah, it's not refreshing for some reason. So okay. You, you don't see the iPhone. Do you see it now? No, same thing as before. But basically, what John's saying is that when you when you load it and run it, th there we go. Now we can see yeah, it, John. 
So what you want to do is when you load the application, run the application, touch these words, log in as a guest, and, and that's how you do the uh, demonstration. And any of you can use this. So you touch the words log in as a guest, and it'll log into our time and billing system in Pittsburgh, just like you were logging into yours. And you can do a real-time demonstration and get the, uh, the feel for the speed. And it's a fully loaded time and billing system, so it, uh, it really replicates what you're doing at your offices. So basically, and, they just load it up and go to the first screen and click on login as a guest. No username, no password, just click that link. That's, that's correct. We did that just so that we didn't have to give everybody a username and password. And just to reiterate, hit the plus sign, touch the matter bar. In real time, it queries the matters within the database. So there's no, uh, there's no uh, syncing of any sort with outside servers. It's all real-time uh, query and a real-time entry once you hit submit. OK. Now, John, when, when those time entries are created, um, when you do receive payment for those at Belfield's offices, how are the receipts allocated? Do we get a cut of that for being a demo user? You finally figured it out, Paul. We don't. That's what it is. That's how you make your money. Okay, Leanne has one more question, or some more questions. Leanne? Jessica would like to know what the definition uh, is of recent matters. I think when you're entering time there. When it pulls recent matters, Paul, what are you pulling? Um, <laughs> um, we are pulling the 20 most recent fee entries created for that timekeeper. So if you have 27 attorneys all using iTimekeep, um, each one is going to have their own list of recent matters. Does that answer it? This is just pulling recent matters as you would be at your uh, desk. It's, it's the matters that you've worked on in the last 30 days as a, as a particular person, not, right. not globally through the office. Right, because, exactly. Because the, the, the idea of the simplicity with iTimekeep is we want to give you what you're most likely to work on. Now, you can search all matters. Am I still showing, Paul? You still um, you're screen? not. You're still at the login screen. All right. Now we're not. Now we're on the time screen. There we go. So we can search all matters as well. You really... It, it defaults to recent matters, but you're not limited to that. I'm going to just put KEL and hit search. Hopefully you're seeing this. And it's querying the database, and it'll pull up everything that has to, anything with KEL. I see Jesco and then Kellogg. So it just searched all matters within our database. And nice. matter two. Great. Any more questions, Leanne? I got a lot of... Um Thank yous and cool. <laughs> Those aren't questions. <laughs> so I, I have one now. Okay. If you are not working on a task-based billing client, does it give you the one field you need to enter instead of the two fields? No. This does not support transaction codes, only task and, and activity codes. So the, the theory is that the attorney is, is typing the description in to the description box and leaving the task code activity code blank. That's a great question. I, I think that's something that um, uh, Gabby, who was the one female in the picture of the, the Belfield people and who is I, I worked with quite a bit helping to develop this interface, uh, that was one thing that I believe she said uh, might be coming in a, in a future version, but right now they were focusing on the task and activity codes because they were required for that type of an entry, but not required for another entry. Okay, Leanne? Um, the question is whether the app does any autofills. John, it will, it will support the, um, the shortcuts that you might define on the phone, won't it? Somebody right. asked me about, right? So if, if a, a user defines in their iPad or in their phone shortcuts that expand and to create text, it will support those. But if you're talking about the text macros from Practice Master and Tabs 3, those also are not supported within this app. One thing that I'd, I'd like to point out is this was recently um, 
interfaced to tabs three, but it has been around for a little while, interfacing with Elite and ProLaw and I believe PC Law and, and quite a few other billing systems. So um, the need for task activity codes has been there all along. These little things that are specific to tabs, you're not going to probably find in iTimekeep uh, in, in the near future, things like text macros, because those are tab-specific features. OK, Leanne? How much is the software that we need to interface with our devices? That's what you're paying. And I'm assuming this person's asking about the software that runs on their their iPhone. And the, what you're paying for when you pay the $440 a year per user is this app that you're seeing to run in a browser on any device or in an iPhone or an uh, iPad app. As far as the software that is back at the office that runs, that connects everything in, the only thing you're paying for there um, is somebody to install it. And you do need the ODBC drivers from um, software technology. If you do not have those, they're available for $99. Um, and then you need to pay somebody to install it to get it running on your system. Any more questions? Well, oh, that 440 also includes all upgrades, all support. It's really a turnkey operation where they uh, we, const we we just make sure that they're running. And Good point. Thanks, John. Yeah. So there's no there's no additional fees. It's just, it's very important to us. The the attorneys are up up 100 percent of the time and are able to put their time in. So you really end up relying on that time keep as your de facto way to enter time. Any more, Leanne? Yes. So we cannot install the software ourselves, that's a question? I wouldn't advise it. You're talking no, about no, you, you really need to work with the reseller uh, because the reseller is the uh, first level of support. If something, yeah, it, if it, your service goes down, if something does happen, you need to pick up the phone and there needs to be either Bellfield and the reseller to take care of you. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's more than just running an install routine on the server. It is a very lengthy, drawn-out, complex install. Any more questions? No, there are no more questions. You've said that already several times. There's still no more questions. <laughs> OK. Well, if I can get done saying what I'm going to say for the next 20 seconds with no more questions, we are done. Uh, this is recorded. It will be produced and up on the website probably in a matter of an hour or so. Um, if you attended or registered, which I guess would be everyone I'm talking to, um, you will get a link or you get an email um, shortly after it's posted. But you can also just all uh, keep checking at attorneycomputersystems.com and click on a coffee pot, which is what we call these webinars. And once it's posted, you'll see it there. And uh, you'll be able to click on it and watch it again if you'd like to review it or show it to somebody else. And with that, and a nod from Leanne to tell me there are no more questions, we are done. John, thanks very much. Everybody have a good day. We will see you soon.